So above me in the dark skies of Namibia is the core of the Milky Way, and this is where we find the pillars of creation buried inside the Eagle Nebula. Now this amazing star-forming region, we've got these huge pillars of dust and gas, and they're collapsing down, and they're forming these embryonic protostars. Now this was first imaged by the Hubble Space Telescope in its 2.4 meter diameter mirror. It was also then re-imaged by James Webb in its 6.5 meter diameter mirror. And I'm going to show you what we can achieve with an amateur telescope, a second-hand telescope that I brought out in my hand luggage. So I've got the telescope all set up. First thing we're going to do is check we're lined up correctly. So we need to find Alpha Centauri. And it's new. And I must remember to take off the dust cover. Just lined up on Alpha Centauri. What we'll do now is we will switch to the camera view. Oh, that looks like an Alpha Centauri. Here she comes. And just looking out for all the faint stars to appear. Yep, so that's looking really well focused. So now we've got our focus, and now we're lined up. We can simply go back to Stellarium, search, and we want M Messier 16. Right, I'm also just going to put the dust cover back on, just take some darks, capture, capture darks, start. So what I'm doing now then is capturing my darks. Now when we take a picture with a digital camera, with an electronic camera, not only do we get the signal from the deep space, the signal from the object we want to capture, but you also get electronic noise, thermal noise on the sensor. By capturing our darks, we can then, the software can then subtract the electronic noise from the real signal and give us a much nicer, cleaner image. Why it is warm. And I realise I've just left my tea over here. I can tell I'm in such a dark sky site. You look at the zodiacal light, so much different from when we had the full moon a, a few days ago. What a difference the sky makes. Right, how are you getting on? I've just told the software to use those new darks. When we finish the, taking these dark images, we're taking 10 so it averages out the noise. We'll then use those new darks to get the better image. You never get tired of this view, being able to look up at this stunning Milky Way, the arch of the Milky Way, gosh. I've worked out how to use darks for the first time for ages. It's now 31 degrees tonight, according to the sensor. No wonder it's warm. Right, let's take you off. We'll call this pillars, if I can spell pillars. And then we will do, just check our settings. Got our flats on, we're doing 300. And the 20 second exposure, live stack. Get rid of you. Reset to you. Reset to you. Oh, what have we got here? Oh, it's there already. Oh, brilliant. It's there already. Oh, fantastic. Yes. I'm just amazed at how someone who's a Luddite like me is quite happy visually observing, learning the night sky. Oh, bollocks, we're not tracking. Track. Or have I st am I still on comet mode? What are we doing? Do, 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 do. Alignment. 
I've done it again. I'm aligning on the comet. Right, let's reset you. Let's clear you. To make the same mistake twice is a bit embarrassing. Oh, there it comes. Oh, that's better. Oh, fantastic. I love it when it works. I'm so impressed with this. It's such a, such a simple way to observe. The software takes all the hassle out of it. The other thing you'll have noticed as well while we're lining up is that I've actually set this up in altazimuth mode. That's just to make it easier for me to observe when I put the eyepiece in. I'll take the camera out later, do some visual observing. And it's so much easier when the, the eyepiece is always in the up-down orientation. But even with that, I can still do my live stacking. And the software will cope with that sort of 15, 20 minute integration time. The field rotation won't be too onerous. I just can't believe how good this image is. I don't think it's quite up to the Hubble or the James Webb standards, but for an amateur telescope, it's at 14 minutes. So just come up to 15 minutes exposure time but you can really see those towering columns of dust this is the star forming regions that that Hubble and James Webb caught wow I still can't get over this here I am in Namibia under this beautifully dark sky dark sky you can see the zodiacal light it's that dark you can see the zodiacal light Milky Way's I mean looks like a looks like a cloud I've been getting the big telescope ready I'm going to leave this running probably to about 20 minutes uh, and then we can um, then we'll I'll turn all the lights off and we'll do some visual observing. See if we can find this as well. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Gosh, what a view! And I can't believe this is with a second-hand telescope with a mount I brought out of my suitcase. It's obviously helped by being under such a a dark sky. So I'm going to point the big telescope. That's Messier 16, so I'm using the hand controller, Messier This running for a few more minutes, make sure we get to about I don't know, 20 minutes or so. I'll turn the light off, turn the laptop off, reset the telescope, and see what we can see visually under such a dark sky. Oh, fantastic! been an awesome 20 minutes or so just chilling out under this night sky under this really dark sky uh, so I've had the nebulosity I can see the open cluster but I can't say with any confidence that I can actually see the pillars of creation there's definitely something there that only if you know exactly where to look I can't say with any degree of confidence that I can see it hold it direct vision with confidence Definitely see the nebulosity, definitely see the open cluster. You can definitely see there's some markings there, there's some texture, there's some details, but it's pretty subtle. So I'm going to part this down as a, there's definitely something there, but it really does show you the power of the camera, the power of that live stacking, that within seconds we have that beautiful image on the laptop screen. Whereas even with a bigger telescope and time on targets, let my eyes get really adjusted to the dark. I can't say with any degree of confidence that we could see it. So good morning. And as you can see, I've left those wonderfully dark skies of Namibia. I'm now back home, back home in England. And I tell people in my astronomy club, I tell friends and family, this is the downside of going to Namibia. You've got these wonderfully dark skies. It's clear night after night after night. You get to stay in this beautiful lodge, get to do the trips. 
but you've got to come home one day and <laughs> it's a really you know you can sort of feel coming back from you know africa in spring being out in the desert in spring is very different to this sort of damp gray uk wet climate you know being on this island in the north atlantic so here is the live stack of the Eagle Nebula then. You can see it's already pulled out. The, the, the pillars of creation, you've got the background nebulosity. And it's really surprising just how much nebulosity surrounds it as well. And of course, we've got this wonderful open cluster and that's been formed. You know, they, these stars have been formed inside the dust cloud. And that's what's happening inside the pillars themselves. That's what's happening. The dust cloud is collapsing down, forming these beautiful proto stars. So you're only going to be able to see this for the next you know, few hundred million years. The radiation from these newly formed stars from the surrounding young star cluster, that's going to blow away the nebulosity. So be quick. It's only going to last another few hundred million years. So this is the sketch I did. And I must say, when I was observing, you know, I could maybe see there's some mottling there's some markings in there but it's pretty subtle so i can't really say with any confidence i did see the pillars of creation now i then did a cloudy night search i did a chat gpt search as well trying to say you know how, what what sort of aperture do you need to see the pillars of creation and it does sort of say you know you need a, a bigger dobson you know a 16 inch 20 inch or, or larger that's the size when the aperture that brings out that contrast difference between the pillars and the background nebulosity of course with the image with the live stacker it's there within seconds and of course that improves as that stack builds up and of course that's really helped by you know being in a place where there is you know the nearest street light is 300 kilometers away you know you're properly under a nice dark sky so easy to capture it with the camera much more challenging to capture it with the eye you know be able to see it through the eyepiece but what great fun how wonderful is that to be able to see this you know to be able to experience that in africa with the jackals calling in the background so in terms of what's coming up then i've been getting up early in the morning i've been doing some jupiter live stacking as well and that's why i'm really enjoying this sharp cap they don't sponsor me i have to pay for my own software license but I've been really enjoying doing the live stacking, you know, doing that stacking and sharpening live on the laptop screen. I don't have to do any post processing, don't have to, you know, leave the laptop stacking while I go around, you know, for the, for the next morning. It's there live on the laptop screen, being able to see these wonderful details. So I'm going to do a deep dive into that, do a deep dive into the live stacking on the planets. And I haven't yet caught, and I say this at the end of November, I haven't seen three eye atlas as it comes round from the back of the sun. Now it is visible, assuming it's not raining and cloudy, it is visible and people in the club have been able to see it, but I've missed it when I've been away with work or have have missed the fact that it's going to be a clear morning. So I do want to do get some observations of three eye atlas as well. And if you've seen it, then I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to be able to see you know what you guys have done as well. So put that in the comments. And as always, my thanks to the patrons, and I will see you in the next video under the night sky.